I want to talk to you about our journey. Our journey of understanding that patients with newly diagnosed advanced ovarian tubal and peritoneal cancer who respond to platinum-based chemotherapy are still at very high risk, very. And so we should keep them in remission using a very tolerable regimen. And that sort of started, published in 2003, GOG 178, which was a taxing. In fact, you remember that that study was stopped prematurely by the Data Safety Monitoring Committee because nine months of additional doses of paclitaxel improved progression-free survival by seven months, but it wasn't enough. And then you're familiar with the evolution that in 2018, we got bevacizumab approved. Again, more tolerable in maintenance based on our study GOG 218, but it was not enough and there was no biomarker. And then we got a biomarker, BRCA. Our th third GOG study, GOG 3004, which you know is SOLO1, published in the New England Journal, evolved the standard and it was wonderful. And then the next study, PRIMA. Prima Neraprib, again, now in all comers, and we got that labeled in April of 2020. Now two years have gone by, but questions remain. What is the best patient for maintenance treatment? What is the best agent? What is the best biomarker? And so Athena is designed to answer some of these questions. And at the ASCO 2020 meeting, I presented Athena Mono, as you may or may not know, Athena has four arms, randomized four to four to three, four to four to one to one. There is an arm which has nivolumab only in it, which will not be analyzed. It sorts out the relative contribution. But Athena mono takes recaprib monotherapy, again, in these patients who respond to frontline platinum-based therapy, and compares it to placebo. And in a completely separate, appropriately powered, randomized placebo-controlled trial, like mono, combo will compare now recaprib as the control arm to the experimental arm recaprib nivolumab. And Athena mono, again, which I presented on April 6, 2022 at ASCO, which was published simultaneously in the Journal of Clinical Oncology, had as its primary endpoint investigator assessed progression free survival in the HRD subset, which was measured by Foundation One CDX with an LOH score of 16% or greater. And that study ultimately not only hit that endpoint, but hit the intent to treat hierarchical step-down endpoint, and it was sensational. And many of you probably enrolled to this. I wanna share with you at a high level, the endpoints. If a patient is HRD positive and ultimately responds to platinum and gets recaprib, they have a 53% chance, better chance of remaining in remission versus placebo. Again, if a patient receives recaprib maintenance in this area, uh, in this setting, the time, median time to recurrence is 28.7 months, but if the patient gets placebo or observation, it's 11.3 months. 28.7 versus 11.3 months. And you say, well, what about all comers? Well, they're still the hazard ratio is 48% better. Hazard ratio is 0 0.52, more than doubling of the progression-free survival, 20.3 two months on recaprib versus 9.2 placebo for observation. Really an amazing result. And it was a celebration in Chicago. Um, we also analyzed the blinded independent central review to add confidence. And in fact, if you look at the HRD test negative group using this Bicker analysis, the hazard ratio is still 0 0.60, uh, 6.4 months versus 12.0 months at the median. In other words, if you have a HRD test negative patient, if she receives recaprib maintenance treatment for up to two years, she can have a 5.6 month improvement at the median. And this was consistent uh, across all uh, pre-specified prognostic subgroups. Um, the adverse reactions were, as has been seen with all PARP inhibitors, uh, a GI, nausea, fatigue, bone marrow, such as anemia, um, and even in the placebo group, those patients also had some symptoms. Now, recaprib is, is delivered at four doses, 600, 500, 400, 300. And we showed that dose intensity can be maintained. I think dose intensity is important with PARP inhibitors. And in the intent to treat analysis, 88% of the patients were able to be maintained on 80% or greater of the dose. And this did not vary based on age or weight. Again, a very important discovery. 
we did notice and confirm again, there's some idiosyncratic low uh, increases in uh, liver function tests, which resolved predominantly without dose interruption or dose reductions. Now this maintenance treatment time used to be considered, oh, let's stop treatment, let's give her a holiday. Well, it's still true. If the patient receives recaparib versus placebo in the HRD subset, as assessed by the investigator, there's a 53% improvement in the risk. Meaning that, and this is a proportional improvement in the risk, meaning the tails of the curves do not come together. Uh, meaning that if a patient responds to platinum-based therapy and has a HRD positive test, they can live progression-free for more than 28.7 months at the median compared to placebo or observation 11.3. That's dramatic, okay? And even in the intent-to-treat analysis, it is prolonged more than double with a 48% improvement, again, a proportional hazard, 9.2 months with observation, 20.2 months in the recaprib arm in the all-comer subset. We had a pre-specified assessment using a blinded independent central review. This was not analytic, but I think it's important because it adds confidence. For example, in the HRD test negative or the HRP subset, which is what we really care about because this is a high unmet medical need, there was also a 40% reduction in hazard ratio, meaning the hazard ratio is 0 0.60, meaning that if a patient is HR D negative or HRP and gets recaprib, she can live a year without progression, which is unprecedented because in the placebo, it was 6.0 months at the median. Now, the adverse reactions uh, uh, were not different than has been pre presented in other studies, with the most common being GI, fatigue and bone marrow, predominantly anemia. Most were low grade. I point out that 92.7% of even the placebo group had treatment emergent adverse events. This can be a symptomatic subset. Uh, there were two patients in the recaprib uh, group, one that had MDS and one that had AML for 0.4%. Now, recaprib does have some idiosyncratic low-grade transaminitis, ALT, AST, that generally resolves without dose modifications. Now, it's all about the patient experience. Remember, in, in you know, paclitaxel is too toxic. There was no biomarker for bevacizumab. Um, and so we want to maintain the patient uh, symptom-free, symptom-free from the medication, but also symptom-free because recurrence can cause life-threatening symptoms. So we measured that carefully using the fact assessment of cancer therapy, ovarian module, there's no decrement. So the patient experience is maintained. So Athena Mono showed that first-line maintenance treatment significantly improves progression-free survival irrespective of HRD status. And even in the HRD test negative or HRP subset, it was statistically significant and clinically meaningful. And in fact, I didn't show you, but measurable patients at the end of platinum-based chemotherapy continue to respond uh, at a very high level. And these responders are durable, uh, way more than 50%. Uh, no new safety signals, no decrement in patient-reported outcomes. And this was a relatively mature study, but more mature than the other studies that I mentioned in my introduction, with more than two years of follow-up at the median. Uh, and in fact, we already, although we don't want this to happen, already have some uh, deaths and uh, that's encouraging that we're uh, impacting survival. So I wanna thank uh, my international colleagues. This is a GOG NGOT collaborative trial. Rebecca Crystallite is the NGOT lead. Uh, Japan uh, also was a key contributor, Energy Oncology Japan with Kaichi Fujiwara. So thank you uh, for your input. Uh, hopefully this will be practice changing, adding more flexibility and more options in the frontline maintenance treatment. And again, I encourage you to look at the paper which was published simultaneously on June 6th, 2022. So long for now.